Hi guys, my name is Trevor Sullivan and welcome to this skill on the Certified Kubernetes Application Developer Training Course here at CBT Nuggets. Now this is a follow-up training course to the Certified Kubernetes Administrator course that we released in March of 2022. So there's a several different exams that I wanted to familiarize yourself with before we get too much into the weeds on CKAD specifically. So if you head out to the Cloud Native Computing Foundation or CNCF's website, there are several different certifications that you can obtain on the Kubernetes platform. And there's three main ones that I wanted to call out. The first one is the Certified Kubernetes Administrator Certification. And this is really important for anybody who is going to be in a type of role where they are responsible for deploying or administering and maintaining a Kubernetes cluster. There's a lot of important concepts that are covered in CKA specifically that cover how to set up a cluster, how to set up a highly available cluster, and things like that. And not all of those concepts are necessarily important for you as a developer of applications that are simply going to be deployed onto a Kubernetes platform. So if you're not in a role where you are predominantly responsible for maintaining and monitoring and managing Kubernetes clusters, then CKA may not be the primary uh, certification that you're looking for. The uh, second certification that I wanted to draw your attention to is the one we're going to be talking about in this course, which is Certified Kubernetes Application Developer. And this one really hones in on a lot more topics that are centered around designing and deploying applications on top of a Kubernetes cluster. Now, that being said, there is certainly some foundational knowledge about Kubernetes that's covered in the Certified Kubernetes Administrator, or CKA exam, that might be relevant for you as a application developer who's deploying onto Kubernetes. However, if you are primarily looking for you know, one out of these three primary exams to cover, then as an application developer, I would probably encourage you to stick with the Certified Kubernetes Application Developer uh, Certification Exam. The one other certification I wanted to call your, call your attention to is the Certified Kubernetes Security Specialist. And this one, as the name implies, focuses a lot more on the security aspect of Kubernetes, things like how to harden a Kubernetes cluster to ensure that it is secured from any malicious attackers, that malicious attackers are not able to gain unauthorized access to your Kubernetes clusters, uh, how to do things like minimize vulnerabilities in microservices. And this actually has a lot of overlap with application developers because as an app developer, when you are looking at reducing vulnerabilities of container-based applications being deployed on Kubernetes, minimizing those vulnerabilities from the original design is actually gonna be a component of your application architecture. So keep in mind that there is gonna be some overlap between these different certification exams. But the CKAD specifically is focused on people who are developing applications and trying to build pipelines to automate the deployment from code all the way to production pods running on Kubernetes. Um, so CKS is a lot more security focused. It talks about things like monitoring and logging and runtime security for your container runtime that you're using within your cluster, like container D or the Docker runtime, for example. Um, but what we're gonna be focusing on in this course here at CBT Nuggets is Certified Kubernetes Application Developer. So just keep these certification exams in the back of your mind. You've got CKA, you've got CKAD, and then you've got CKS for security focus. And so that's kind of the high level lay of the land as far as examinations go around the Kubernetes platform from the CNCF. Now, one of the nice things about the CNCF is that because it is part of the Linux Foundation, they're pretty transparent about the work that they are doing. And they actually have a repository over here on GitHub called uh, github.com slash cncf slash curriculum. And this, this uh, repository actually contains several different PDF documents that cover the kind of um, topics that you are going to see in Certified Kubernetes Administrator, Certified Kubernetes uh, Security Specialist, as well as the Certified Kubernetes Application Developer. So they provide this in a PDF uh, format here. It's basically just a two or three page document here that covers the high level topics that we're going to be covering in the CKAD course. So I wanted to kind of start off by going over this information with you from the curriculum 
and just talk about how you can kind of prepare mentally for the rest of this course as well as prepare for the exam itself. Now, one thing I wanted to note is that the cost for the CKAD exam is $375. And the CNCF does actually include one free retake for that. So if you head out to their website, you'll see in the, in the fine print right down here, the cost is $375, but it also does include one free retake. So if you're taking this exam and you're not sure if you're going to pass it on the first occasion, then you know maybe it's worth just kind of taking it just to get a feel for how the exam format is so that you can get more comfortable with it and then you know if you don't happen to pass it on the first iteration you always do get that one free retake as well so uh, just keep that in mind from a cost perspective that even if you do pay that 375 but you don't pass it the first time you still have that second chance without paying an additional fee on top of that 375. now something else that differs from the CNCF exams compared to other certification exams that I've personally taken in the past on things like the Microsoft platform, as well as a bunch of the Amazon Web Services uh, certification exams, is that the CNCF exams are very much scenario-driven versus Q&A-driven. And what do I mean by that? Well, scenario-driven exams often are going to test very specifically your knowledge on a platform by actually having you execute commands within a shell environment to show that you actually understand the different concepts of a particular platform, in this case, Kubernetes, of course. And so with the scenario-driven exams, you wanna have a lot more hands-on experience than simply conceptual knowledge about a platform as with some other vendor certifications out there. You know, with AWS certifications, you can do a whole bunch of book learning and not really spend a lot of hands-on time with the platform, and you might actually be able to pass certain certification exams within the AWS ecosystem. Now, with Kubernetes, that is quite a bit different because if you are not familiar with things like the kubectl command line utility, if you are not familiar with cluster architecture in Kubernetes and how you've got master nodes and worker nodes, if you're not familiar with the different components of a Kubernetes cluster, like your API server, your scheduler component, your controller manager component that runs on your master nodes, as well as the kubelet component, which is responsible for actually running the pods on your worker nodes within your cluster, as well as uh, static pods on your master nodes as well. If you're not familiar with a lot of those core concepts about Kubernetes, and you try to take one of these scenario-driven exams, then you're probably going to find that you run into some challenges pretty quickly. Um, you know, when I first took the Certified Kubernetes Administrator exam, and I first took one of these kind of scenario-driven exams, it really kind of opened my eyes to how specific they are with the different questions that they're asking. They're not just giving you three or four different options. They're giving you an objective that you have to accomplish, and then you have to actually run the commands and edit different text files and config files in your Kubernetes cluster in order to satisfy the requirements of that learning objective on the exam. So keep in mind that this is very different from many other vendor certification exams out there. And so you'll want to be mentally prepared before you actually attempt to take the exam for the first time to know that these are gonna be scenario-driven questions and that you're gonna to have to be familiar with shell commands, especially kubectl, since that's our primary interface for managing Kubernetes and uh, just have, have that knowledge going into this exam. So make sure that you spend a lot of hands-on time with Kubernetes. Don't just watch these videos in this course and expect that you're gonna be able to pass. You really want to spin up your own clusters. Um, you know, just the practice of spinning up and destroying clusters themselves is actually a really good experience as well because that kind of forces you to kind of get your cluster back up and running on different cloud vendors out there. And I would encourage you to try different distributions of Kubernetes as well. Don't just settle for, you know, picking one distribution of Kubernetes and letting that be it. Um, you know, sometimes I've found that using Amazon EKS makes more sense. Sometimes I've found that using DigitalOcean's managed Kubernetes service uh, gives me a little bit more awareness about some other open source tools within the Kubernetes ecosystem. Uh, they use, for example, they use an open source utility called Cilium on their clusters by default that EKS does not use. 
Uh, also, EKS has things that are specific to it, like IAM integration with AWS Entity and Access Management, and that simply doesn't exist in the DigitalOcean ecosystem. It doesn't have the same concept of IAM roles like AWS does. So play around with some of the different distributions of Kubernetes out there, different managed cloud providers like DigitalOcean, Linode, uh, Microsoft Azure, AKS, uh, EKS from Amazon Web Services, and maybe even Google's Kubernetes engine, GKE as well. And then if you're looking for other distributions of Kubernetes that you can run uh, locally, you might want to look at a distribution like K3S. Uh, K3S was actually originally developed by Rancher Labs, and it's a really nice lightweight distribution to run Kubernetes uh, locally on your own systems. So that's one option. You've also got um, Kubernetes in Docker or the Kind project. And this is another project that will actually allow you to spin up a Kubernetes cluster inside of Docker itself. So you're basically running Kubernetes as an array of containers. So that's kind of a cool option that you have as well. And then one of the easiest ways to get um, your Kubernetes cluster up and running is actually just to install Docker Desktop here as well. So Docker Desktop actually includes its own distribution of Kubernetes. So that's yet another option that you have to run Kubernetes locally. So there's a bunch of different distributions out there, but I would encourage you to practice with different distributions. Don't just use, you know, Google Kubernetes Engine and think, okay, I know enough. Um, you know, play around with K3S, play around with uh, the, the built-in Docker desktop distribution of Kubernetes as well. And that'll just give you more breadth of experience and understand some of the nuances between how different distributions of Kubernetes works. So that's just something I wanted to kind of point out as you are preparing for the CKAD exam. Now, CKAD, as the name implies, is really geared more towards application developers. So the uh, primary topics that are going to be covered are things around how to build container images and deploy container images as Kubernetes pods out into your cluster. There's a lot less emphasis on things like networking and you know, cluster deployment and cluster monitoring and that kind of stuff. However, you are still going to want to know how to debug applications that are running in Kubernetes clusters because as an application developer, if something goes wrong with one of your application pods, then you're going to need to know things like how do I get logs from pods? How do I you know, run shell commands in pods if I need to in order to do investigative work, to gather data so that I can debug any kind of problems that might be occurring in my Kubernetes based applications. There are also some Kubernetes security topics that are going to be covered in, as well in CKAD, and we'll talk about those in a little bit more depth here in the overview skill here. But uh, these are going to be a little bit more centered around things like how do I authenticate to the Kubernetes API server? Uh, how do I use security contexts? How do I use uh, secrets? How do I create config maps to configure my applications in a more agnostic fashion? And things like that. So the, the primary topics in CKAD are going to be geared towards application developers that are working with a DevOps team that's ultimately going to be deploying production scale applications onto Kubernetes clusters. Anyways, we're going to drill into these next videos and cover some of the topics in a little bit more depth. We'll cover just at a high level what some of these learning objectives are for the CKAD exam and make sure that as you continue your learning journey in preparation for the CKAD exam, that you'll understand kind of what these high level topics are. And then in our other skills within the CKAD course, we're going to drill much deeper and actually get hands on time with some of these concepts in Kubernetes so that you can go into CKAD best prepared so that you can successfully pass that exam. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.